Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. As highly on investors, we need to continue to stay focused on the progress of the company. Uh, I will earmark 10 and two bonus items that I feel like highly on must do to succeed, and they will. Uh, all of these items I am aiming to add a little bit more uh, highlight around uh, as we continue to monitor the progress with the company itself. Um, and remain steadfast and focused on better times ahead. I, I know sometimes we get uh, mixed up in what we think we can do in the short term to help maybe uh, infuse a little bit of confidence in the stock price here. Um, those efforts are futile uh, and they are uh, not helping in the face of what has been an exacerbated sell-off in the uh, grander stock market, um, I think has a lot to do with uh, the contributing factor uh, behind this uh, wall of headwind that Hylion is up against and, and many other stocks. Nobody's immune to the roll-off. Um, and, and I think Hylion is just uh, caught up in this tor tornado storm of uh, what has been a, a fairly uh, horrible 2022 uh, in in stock market investing and uh, greater equities, the bond market and the stock market alike have just been atrocious. Um, real estate is next. Uh, real estate should roll off. And I think in this firestorm of volatile markets, I, I think we need to understand that the more pile on that happens with this company, um, the more opportunity it gives them to get this stuff right. So I thought it would be beneficial for the grander shareholder base of the company. For full disclosure and disclaimer, I, I own a significant uh, share uh, position in this company. I have since the beginning. Uh, I took a small liquidation for a tax loss back in 2021 uh, of about 4,000 shares. I've since supplemented those shares and, and much more as the stock prices digressed on us here. I do still consider 2022 and 2023 as bring, being bridging years. I think if you're walking across a bridge, uh, I think 2023 is going to be the latter half of the bridge. In other words, you can actually see the other side as opposed to embarking on this, this journey across this bridge. Um, I think 2022 has the potential of being the worst year uh, in the uh, evolution of the stock. There has been really no good news with regard to the stock sentiment. Uh, as we've uh, watched and monitored this stock price continue to uh, fall back on us. However, the, the company uh, has continued to show marked progress. And uh, in, in the face of all of the uh, global geopolitical uh, conflict that's going on right now, as well as the supply chain issues that I understand is starting to loosen up a little bit, uh, as well as just general volatility in the market, um, I, I think it's it's quite amazing and perhaps maybe in reflection, I know it's difficult to do it now, look at the current sentiment around the stock and expect that uh, anything other than the fact that the company's going out of business is, is in order. Uh, I think that's uh, very short-sighted and I think it's all too often uh, the disease that is uh, applied amongst the retail community. Um, when looking at a specific stock price and somehow justifying your position based on uh, what has happened in the short term as far as a trajectory for the stock, and, and, and unfortunately, that bleeds over into your stock decisions to just suggest that it's going to continue on. Um, Hylion is in a phenomenal position with regard to its, its financial backing. Now, whether or not this transition across this bridging phase that I've identified to make it a little bit more conceptually acceptable for shareholders uh, is going to happen within the next couple of years is yet to be seen. But here are the 12 items, and I'm going to march through the, the 10 as quickly as I can for some of you people who have complained that you're not happy with an hour and a half video, you're not happy with a 45-minute video. Perhaps maybe I can crank this out in a half hour uh, to try to appease everybody um, because social media is one of those things to where I come on and uh, no matter what I say, it's impossible to appease everybody. Um, the irony is you can pull me up on your iPhone 13 and, and, and enjoy what I feel like is the best idea that I've seen in the last 20 years of investing. Um, and that's including Google, which was a phenomenal idea, and including Facebook uh, on the onset, which I consider to be a phenomenal idea. 
Um, I think Hylion is right up there with those phenomenal ideas, different approach, right, in the industrial technology space. Um, I, for a living, work uh, around and inside um, and around uh, vessels. Uh, and when you're out to sea, you need to understand that certain power generating units are put on those vessels specifically for um, those intended uh, uh, power draws uh, uh, in certain applications. And Hylion has basically done just that. Uh, and I think their idea is phenomenal. I think their idea is good enough to, to really stand the test of time. And once penetrated um, into the greater class eight space, I think the domino effect is really going to take hold and people are going to be forced to take notice on this opportunity, which right now um, they are really just being piled upon with the rest of the market. And when better times are to be had, and they will, they always do. Um, I've been through this many, many times in my young investing career. I'm only 45. I've went through a multitude of these. Um, and it's my steady hand during these times of volatility where um, it uh, can put a retail investor with less time and, and, con and confidence in the investing decisions that they've made uh, at ease. Uh, and that's what I aim to do. Um, for you guys that follow me on Twitter, I would just like to say that um, my comments to the Hylion with regard to their lack of transparency is specifically isolated to what they've aimed to, uh, uh, to address with their investor relations, okay? Um, it is not a, a specific knock on Hylion as a holding, uh, as a whole, uh, rather a, uh, an isolated uh, specific criticism of the company in way of what I feel like is a lack of transparency. Um, and I'm right. Uh, you guys can disagree with me all you want. You can disagree with my tactics. Uh, I am one that believes in free speech. Uh, I don't believe in, you know, curbing my dialogue and having some sort of like obligation as a professional uh, to somehow not point out the fact that I believe that they are uh, absolutely failing in the category of being forthcoming. I mean, if you compare the amount of news uh, releases from Nikola Motors, who just had their founder and previous CEO convicted of fraud on three fourths of the counts, they still keep firing away. And I find it ironic in the face of a, a company that I actually believe they have all kinds of things to say, which is a lot of the reason why I push this product out. Um, that they should be doing more and they are choosing not to regurgitating that they finalized the Carno generator and pushing out as of September 13th an investor relations video and awareness which I appreciated wholly um, guys we are a month removed to that news and the Carno generator if you scrub that from the dock it was actually an old piece of news uh, that they waited and conveniently released around this time perhaps maybe thinking that the stock was actually going to be at 20 or 25 dollars at around this time they were wrong it generated zero hype and since the news was released the stock has done nothing but continue to retrace why because sentiment is blasted it's gone uh, sentiment amongst the few retail uh, communities that hold this share float it's fine but i'm talking about general sentiment in the market which couldn't be any worse than what it is right now actually it could um, and i foresee and have no reason to believe that it couldn't get worse uh, and that's just the uh, brutal reality of the situation that we have with regard to the stock price. But um, for you guys that were offended by my Twitter uh, uh, tw tweets, I guess, um, I, I do apologize to you few folks. I think there's a few folks out there that don't say one way or the other, but actually uh, enjoy my defense of what uh, I am merely trying to point out uh, as being extremely misleading on the onset. Now here we are holding the bag, asking for answers and prov being provided none to date. Um, here's, here's the list. And as I work through this list, I want you to kind of think about these things um, in the context of whether or not you think that Hylion will achieve these, uh, these milestones or if they are pursuing achieving these milestones or they won't. Um, and this will help you in your deliberation of understanding where I think the goods are in evaluating this company uh, as far as um, where they could potentially go into the future. Number one, achieve certification. Um, now, I have a statement at the end of this, and I have 
gone through the deliberation myself, um, and I've answered these questions, and I will give you the answer to what I think that they will or will not achieve as I go through this. Uh, but achieving certification with the assistance of Cummins and other players in the network, um, I believe that they will. Uh, I will. I believe that they will absolutely um, achieve the CARB and NHTSA certification, which I think should be kind of a cherry on top of all this research and development that has gone into taking the hyper truck uh, from what it was two years ago to something not even close to what it was two years ago. Um, I think they have used this public market as a as a proving ground uh, and shareholders and share owners alike have have bared the brunt of that uh, proving ground. Will it pay off into the future? Well, that's what we're betting on. OK, so um, is it going to be something that you're going to blame the company on into the future if they actually end up turning out a product that achieves CARB NHTSA certification and that fleets can actually embrace as being a finalized proof of concept that can be put into the rigor of class eight uh, trucking and actually work for um, those uh, fleets out there in what they're pursuing? And that is to move away from uh, a diesel dominated future. And I believe that they will. I believe they absolutely will. And I think we have that coming uh, in Q1, probably of, or even later Q4, uh, as we move into 2023. I think that's going to be a fantastic milestone. Um, I'm anticipating at this point, guys, incurring good news and having the stock continue to just remain here at these recessed all-time low levels because um, evidently we're working in a stock market to where if you're charismatic uh, and you lie and you manipulate and scheme your way to the top, you can actually uh, do really, really well if the optics are well. Right now, the optics are horrible for Hylion, but the fundamentals are fantastic. Now, there are some gaps in the fundamentals, the financials, and some of the things that I'll discuss that I believe they are uh, looking to achieve. Uh, of course they are. I'm a I'm a realistic individual, okay? I don't think they've put on this, this Sunday dress to not go to the party, okay? If you just look at Hylion, the business, the build out of the team, the acquisition of the technology, the leveraging of their current patent uh, portfolio to make this thing and see this thing through to the end, is there any indication that they're not going to achieve these milestones? I think if from a practical perspective, you take a sit back and you look at this and you say, God, are they, are they really doing all this only to inevitably fail? And in the eyes of the market, there's a lot of people out there that are just suggesting that this company is just going to go away. Um, I find it interesting that people who really have a, an in-depth knowledge of this company find that a very, very far cry. Um, and at this point, I think it's probably the most applicable to make those criticisms of the company. And I think that it is the most convenient and easy to do, right? With a stock price below $2.50, it's easy to sit there and say that now. I think it's going to be more difficult to say that uh, as the improvements are made within the company and all of those naysayers those voices will drown out and then it'll flip and everybody will be talking about FOMO buying the stock to the moon. It's just usually how it happens. But um, in either case, I'm continuing to hold true on my stock and um, waiting for them to achieve that certification because I think that's going to be a critical milestone in the evolution of the company. And I believe that they will. Number two is garner new orders. Now, <clears throat> I look at their existing order book as being proof that they will continue to garner orders. There's been orders that have been added to the order book from companies that I didn't even know existed, okay? Um, there's been orders added by some of the companies that they've done business with, and they feel comfortable entering into those, uh, those orders this early on in the game. I think for some of those larger companies that have not submitted orders, I think perhaps maybe they're waiting for some of these milestones to be reached. And when they do, I believe those orders will follow suit. Uh, so to garner new orders, I think to expect that they will not continue to build out this order book maybe is more of an escape to thinking. Um, this is just my best interpretation of the current situation, what's going on. I think the recessed stock price absolutely hurts confidence. But right now, it's not like we're in a flourishing stock market to where Hylion has looked upon and said, whoa, 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 this is a big red flag here. Something's going on here. It's the, it's the latter, where 
that the market is dragging everything down, sentiment is adjusting down. So to have or expect that the company's sentiment is going to increase in the face of what has been volatile markets, I think is really kind of short-sighted and it's, 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 it's ill-advised at this point. Um, it doesn't fit. Uh, if you wanted to criticize highly on in a bull market and everything was flourishing and there was no supply chain and there was no global um, you know, geopolitical tension, as well as an energy crisis right now that's putting ripples through the energy market, then I would say that those criticisms are, are warranted. But I, I think to suggest that going forward, even over the next coming uh, bridging years, closing out what has been a dismal 2022 and entering into 2023, that they're not going to continue to fortify that order book eh, is probably an escape to thinking in my mind. And I would suggest that you reevaluate uh, your current uh, posture on this idea that Hylian is going to fade into oblivion and not meet, meet new orders. I think we're going to laugh at this time when we reflect back on it, when Hylian is turning out uh, multiple hundreds and maybe even, dare I say, thousands of orders per quarter uh, as some of these things kind of are met and checked off of the ledger uh, in their evolution of the company. But garner new orders, I believe that they will. Number three is, is build out their current team roster. This is something that um, I just sit back sometimes and I'm amazed at how well they have done on this. I've always contended that Hylion gets an A-plus in this category. Finding talent in the capacity that they are looking for talent is very, very difficult. The engineers that they're looking for, um, they just hired on, I believe, the senior engineer for the Carnot Generator Project. The Carnot Generator Project, <clears throat> I guess you could sit back and disagree that that's not bullish. Um, I'm one to completely disagree with this. I'm very excited about the Carnot Generator Project. I released a couple of videos at the time of, of, of acquisition of that technology, um, and I think it's going to lend itself valuable when I talk about leveraging into uh, additional income SKUs uh, as the company grows and builds out. Mm -hmm. But the key to this is going to be their ability to build out a current team roster, okay? And they get an A-plus on this. They're continuing to build out their team. Hirings continue on a month-over-month -month basis. Uh, I track this internally with the assistant of one of my good friends in the community um, who's, who's walking this bridge with me. Um, and, and at some point, it may just be me and him, to be honest with you, since people judge me on my Twitter feed um, as, as somehow the end-all be-all of who I am as a person and a social media content creator, when at the end of the day, I'm really just trying to put pressure on them to provide more transparency. Um, that's, that's it at the end of the day. Um, but to continue to build out the roster, um, to suggest that they won't is probably an escape from thinking. My evaluation is that they will continue to build out that roster as we move forward. Number four, uh, to continue to endure supply chain issues, I think is huge. I saw some data just as early as this week that would suggest that the supply chain issues are uh, relaxing a little bit. Uh, we will look for more color on the next uh, the next call that's coming up. Uh, with Thomas Healy to suggest that perhaps maybe uh, some of the parts that they are requisitioning are uh, becoming a little bit more available. Uh, if not, then they're going to have to continue to endure this. The, the greater question is, is Hylion going to survive because of the supply chain issues? That's the deeper question. And I believe that they will. Have they done a good job of enduring it thus far? Yes. The color that's been provided by the CEO uh, suggests that the team has done a good job of finding alternative strategies to find these components that they need and build a backlog of said components to make sure that they can be, meet their, uh, their order, um, their order um, responsibility to the orders that have already been placed. But um, I think they'll continue to endure it. And I think that this, uh, in short order, in the next couple of years, if not even shorter, I think going into 2023, I think if the ability to dissolve away the supply chain issue that we've um, that we've been enduring over the last year, year and a half or so, um, will be a major catalyst for the company. Will the stock move? Probably not. But will they do this? I believe that they will. 
So when you take that and you check that off of the ledger on what, things that needs to happen, not necessarily in the control of Hylion, it's going to be a, a positive catalyst to the to the to the bottom line if we can get that out of the way. Number five is to continue to solidify a process with the OEMs. Um, this is one of the major criticisms I have for for Hylion. Um, we've had major pieces of milestones release, and the Hylion uh, uh, has fallen short of those milestones by a long shot, okay? The Hylion Bulls, they're going to agree with me on this, probably in silence, but not necessarily publicly. Me, I'm a lot different. I come out and I say it how I see it, and they have fallen short on a lot of milestones that they've pushed forward. Therefore, it calls into question some of the credibility and understanding that were some of those things that were talked about with the OEMs in way of OEMs hubs. I remember many, many quarters ago, I think it was later 2020, when one of the analysts on the Q&A on one of the quarter on one of the calls actually pressed Thomas Healy on expressing an idea of how that OEM hub would be made up. How would that how would that assist in providing the OEMs with that uh, technical supplement for those customers that want the Hylion solution installed off the OEM line? And I thought I thought Thomas Healy stumbled through the question, couldn't answer it at all. And it makes me just suggest that maybe some more color is in order on making sure that once we get across the bridge, um, that we don't have another two to three year bridge to, to follow while Hylion builds their actual OEM manufacturing facility themselves because their uh, relationship with Peterbilt wasn't what it was suggested. And I'm not suggesting that it's not. What I'm suggesting is that we need more color around this, which is critical to the company. If you remove Peterbilt from the equation, we do not have a company. Let's just be real. Hylion is a symbiotic company. They have to have the uh, buy-in from another company to make it. They have to. We had to have Meritor, and Meritor was absorbed by Cummins. Now we have Hylion on their own, still sourcing their product from Cummins, yes, but without that sourcing, Hylion would not exist, okay? The, the solution comes together as a byproduct of a lot of singular products that are put together to integrate as one solution. And I tell you what, without the major builder of that truck being the OEM and the Peterbilt and the five series that's turned off of the line, which is supposed to be in the initial iteration of the Hypertruck ERX, guys, we are in trouble. And it is, is not a knock on the company. I'm not being rude by demanding this transparency, okay? Some of you think that I am, and that's fine. I've suggested that if you don't like my approach and you don't like my edgy uh, type of approach to this, um, I, I challenge the world a lot in being a lot more fluff fluff than we need to be. Um, just speak normally. And my Twitter feed comes across as if I'm screaming at Hylion. I'm not. I'm merely suggesting that they need to actually do this. And if they're not going to do it, just return shareholders money. Throw in the towel. Don't go silent on the line. It makes people come up with presumptions. And again, the bulls are going to be like, they're going to make it. There is no guarantee that Hylion makes it. And I hate to just be a bearer of the truth in the stock market, but I think there's a lot more followership and a lot more uh, blind uh, d devotion to this company, uh, rather than just being acute and astute shareholders in the company. And that doesn't mean just accepting everything that they do um, at, at face value, and that everything they do and every decision that they make is golden. I don't take that approach. If you want to take that approach, that's totally fine. Um, and again, you're totally welcome to sign off. Good luck finding other highly on uh, content creators out there uh, as down to earth as me that speaks what I consider to be the truth on both sides of the coin. Now, my edge and my emphasis is on a bullish conviction. My share ownership speaks to that. But I don't speak about that except for the on the onset to provide the proper disclaimer to investors to understand that that is absolutely where I come from, from a share owner position. But when we're looking at a new company and to be somehow immune to scrutiny, that's just where me and you differ. OK, that's just where me and you differ. And I don't think it makes a damn bit of difference, to be honest with you guys anyway. Somebody would suggest that somebody's reviewing all my tweets. Forget it. They don't. They don't read anything. They don't respond to anything. I've never re been responded to. Silent Alert is about as above board as you can possibly get. And he's received one, one response from Hylion. 
uh, in, in response to a very, very prudent question. And he does that almost on a daily basis and receives what I consider to be zero, and I mean zero reciprocation from a shareholder perspective, okay? But to solidify the process with the OEMs, do I think they will? I do. I think there's been enough provided to suggest that Peter Bilt is in bed enough with Hylion that they will be there on that initial onset to realize and help Hylion realize these orders, um, not in 2026, but in 2024. But we'll see. Um, my tweet this week was suggesting that how many build slots are, if at all, they're going to need. If they have an OEM hub, they won't need any build slots. They'll basically just uh, merge in with the existing build slots for those companies that want to add on the Hylion solution at the end of the line, the beginning of the line, the wherever in the line. We don't know uh, when it goes to the OEM hubs at the time where it's the easiest to do so when the chassis is the most bare to start to add these components on there. When and how are they going to be added? When are you asking to interrupt the Peterbilt uh, defined uh, assembly line and 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 segue this Hylion solution for Hylion's benefit. And what does Peterbilt get out of it? We don't know. We don't know. And these are some of the things that I run against barriers as um, a diplomatic applicator <laughs> and looking at this thing from face value, guys. And you, you wonder where some of the frustration comes from. Um, you guys are crazy. Uh, I, 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 th I think it's wonderful that you can live life walking on a cloud. Um, me, I'm a lot more realistic, and I'm, I'm very aware that I have both of my feet squarely on the ground. Um, and when I see something that needs a little bit more color, I, I, don't, I don't mind at all to push that stuff out there. Um, it's as if there's some sort of social media uh, set of rules and regulations that I need to abide by to exercise my right to free speech. Um, and you guys that are really, really savvy on those rules of etiquette, um, if you want to hold others to that, no problem. Um, if you're, if you're, if you think that I'm breaking those rules, again, I would invite you to just unsubscribe and unsubscribe from every piece of media content that I put out because it just doesn't mean that much to me. What means more to me is having open and unabated uh, access to a company that I follow, and I think we deserve more. That's it. Is that it? And 20 years ago would have never been possible. Now it is. Sorry that the monster of Twitter was created to actually pose those questions to the powers that be and demand those answers. 25 years ago, retail investors would have been stuck having to sit on their haunches on the farm and, and, and wait for the Sunday newspaper for this information to get delivered. Now we have the opportunity to release said information multiple times a day, and they're choosing not to. Understand where my deeper frustration comes from now? Good. If you don't, unfollow me. Please, I'm begging you. I don't want you to follow me. Um, I've had to block a couple of people because some of the direct communications to me came right to my wife. And that's uh, digging a little bit deep. You guys have no idea how much scrutiny I endure through social media to put this product out. You have no idea. Zero. None. All you get to do is watch for my Sunday video and you get to watch me in my best light come on and talk about a company that I love. You have no idea about the below the surface stuff. But when it starts to cut that deep, I cut it off. Off. And that's exactly what I did. So you get to sit that back and you get to enjoy the public version of me. And that's it. And if you don't like that, then I'll block you from the independent investor channel because I have no qualms about doing that either. Because here's the thing, my friends, I share a vision with uh, the retail investing audience that seemingly misses 99% of the time, the fact that you have to continue to walk across the bridge until you get to the other side. Most people want to jump off the bridge 25%, 2%, 67%, 51%. Across the bridge, and very, very few will meet, make it to the other side. Very, very few. Okay. For people who watch me, can actually feel a little bit motivated and feel like, no, they don't have to succumb to habits of the past. Why retail investors suck at investing. Okay. They can tune into me and understanding what mindset it takes to actually succeed in this rackus. Okay. So I'm sorry if my tough love offends you, if it does to the point where you lose sleep over it, or you feel like you want to reach out to me via direct comms, do that. Better be above board with it because I'll cut you off because it doesn't mean shit to me. Okay. All right. Number six. 
they have to leverage their network partners. I talked about this, and this is going to help them achieve their certification. Cummins is their collaborative partner now uh, on this front. To what extent, I don't know. All I'm going off of is what I've been told um, through news releases with the company. I think this is exciting. I think it could lend itself to those certifications that we seek down the line. Okay. So do I believe that they'll make this? Yes, I do. And they will. Okay. Number seven is to validate and substantiate their TCO. This is something I've spoke about for the last two years with Hyleon. Imagine fleets out there that have ownership of this product. Okay. And they, they're introducing it into the rigor and they're introducing the specs on a level that we know of now. Okay. We know about them now. Thousand miles of range, bringing the onboard generator, reducing downtime, driver experience, hoteling, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. We know about it. They're in the hands of the fleets. And the fleets are able to identify this total cost of ownership benefit to the fleets year over year. And dare I suggest multiple years over years. And dare I suggest even to take it through a life cycle of a truck from year one to year seven to 10. Okay, and they're able to really articulate and 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 uh, uh, grind up that information and turn out a bottom line figure to suggest that the highly on solution hypertruck ERX compared to diesel provided us this much net benefit to the bottom line. Okay, that is going to be powerful. What I foresee is that these fleets are going to take ownership of this company and the domino effect is going to happen. The communication, the actual introduction into rigor, and these products are actually going to perform in a manner that it can actually really get these fleets attention to suggest that, look, we can drive these routes on alternative fuels and we can do so in a way that's comparable to diesel or, or superior to. We can enjoy better torque and horsepower in these specific categories, we can drive down our fueling cost by enjoying renewable natural gas, leveraging existing infrastructure through comp compressed natural gas. And we can really start to benefit on multiple fronts and all the while go green, go green, which we're going to be forced to do anyway. Okay. We're going to be forced to transition anyway. And I think when that churn of industry happens and that domino effect and communication, and it really starts to speak to the bottom line on the books, that's really going to be the unlocking catalyst for the value of Hylion. How is it actually affecting these companies that they serve? That's going to be key. And we are not there, my friends. We will be. We will be. And when we are, that's going to be the real churn. And that's going to be the real unlocking of the value. The value proposition right now, let me give you an analogy. It's like a compressed spring. And a spring can inevitably compress all the way until it can't press anymore. And you can still apply mechanical pressure to that spring at its break-even uh, critical mass. Okay. Now, if you think that the that the, that the press is going to press the spring in so much as to crush the spring, i.e. Hylion goes out of business, okay, you're entitled to your opinion. But I think the compression is what's going on right now. And it can compress very, very tightly, okay? 250, 150, 350, I don't know, it doesn't matter. We're in a compression stage. What does that matter? It help you get some context and, and, and shed some light around what I feel like what this stock price means right now. It's compressed. It's at all-time lows. It's compressed. What happens when the pressure lifts? And the pressure lifts, in all fairness, in the stock market, sometimes late, sometimes early. But it does inevitably happen. If Hylion goes tits up and goes insolvent, then we'll have our answer, right? If those of us that believe that there's a better chance that that doesn't happen and that that severe pressure on the top of the spring right now is happening and that pressure is relieved, right? We're going to have a compress a, 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 an expansion and we're going to have an expansion. The spring effect is going to jar at the beginning of that uh, when we start to actually get into this um, validation stage, which unless you're a follower of this company, you're not going to truly understand the potential 
on the top end for that expansion. All you're seeing right now is the compression. That's all you're seeing. Oh, wow. You know, Highland's really under the press. I have no idea why. I do, but I have no idea why. Therefore, I'm not going to invest in it. Okay. It's a no touch right now. I'm going to go invest in Tesla. Okay. I saw an interesting comment come through by one of the uh, highly on discord group members that suggested all of these people that are piling into Tesla right now, which I think is propping up the stock price may have a 1.5 to 1.7 times multiple suggested that potentially highly on has much larger. I'm not going to disclose those numbers, uh, but much larger uh, expansion multiple than that. And I think that's smart. I think that's smart to suggest that the compression with Tesla happened a long, long time ago. Now it's been an expansion mode for the last multiple years, right? So when we're looking at a stock price, it's easy to look at Tesla and say, well, that expansion is just going to continue to uh, ultimately and inevitably and infinitely continue. Um, could be, could be. You're entitled to your, uh, your opinion, might I suggest this for you guys, and this will really help you. The money is made on the compression. The money is made putting your bets in before expansion, okay? There is going to be people who pile into this company at 10, 15, 20, 25, pile in, okay? There will be very, very, very few. <clears throat> and the rhetoric on the landscape speaks to this. There will be very, very few that have the conviction necessary to actually purchase this same company. It'll be the same company at 25 as it was at 250, same company, okay? It'll just that we have some of this compression fear actually uh, taken out of the equation and it'll, it'll be identified that some of this news is starting to contribute to the expansion phase, okay? All right, good stuff. Um, they need to realize integration. That's key. There was some discussion on the highly on Discord group this week uh, on <clears throat> going by different semis and looking for the highly on em emblem. I do the same, um, and we're not seeing it. It's a diamond in the rough right now. We need massive numbers uh, turned out. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of trucks out there on the road to penetrate. It speaks to the addressable market. And we need to start to realize some of that integration into the class eight fleet. Okay. Number nine is to leverage the tax uh, incentives. This is going to be huge. What's it going to mean for Hylion when these companies like Anheuser-Busch, uh, like Green Path Logistics are coming out and they're talking about uh, enjoying that uh, $40,000 tax credit uh, on the units that they've purchased. This is going to be huge. If, if companies don't know, and I would be hard pressed to suggest that they don't know, but if they didn't know, to look at those tax incentives and say, hold on a second, this highly on Hypertruck ERX does qualify. Let's look more into the solution and start to churn out some of that interest in the, um, in the fleets that Thomas is working really hard right now mechanically to try to generate some of that interest. Um, I would suggest perhaps maybe that those efforts are somewhat futile now because those need to be more organic. They need to be more of a churn within the industry to suggest that once they bring on one of their fleet partners, like a return it uh, that was featured this week on a tweet up in Canada that um, other companies are being brought into the fold by nature of referential and not necessarily direct contact from Hylion. Hylion's not going to be able to pick up the phone and sell thousands of hyper trucks every single, every single month or every single quarter. Do you guys think that that's the expectation? No. The expectation is that people are coming to Hylion and saying, hey, I'd like to solidify my block of slots through the OEM. How do I go about doing that? And their job is to process the order, not necessarily uh, be, uh, make sales, okay? That's how it's going to happen. It's going to happen more organically. And I think right now they're in more of a mechanical phase where they're trying to generate churn. And that's very, very difficult to do. It's easier to suggest, no, nah, no, nah, I'll wait on the early onset of a, of a product. I'll wait. I'll wait a year. I'll wait two years. I'll wait until other fleets put it into rigor. Then I'll choose my opportunity based on what I evaluate from the other company because they took on all the risk. Now I get the, um, the benefit of the information, uh, granted that it's not proprietary information, and that we can understand that that company uh, either benefited from the product or they didn't, and I can make my decisions. That cost me nothing, right? And I think there's a lot of that gamesmanship going on right now 
in the class eight space. In other words, I don't think the dam has even become close to being broken on this opportunity. And Hylion has to be there when it does break. They have to make sure that they can meet those specifications. So right now over this bridging phase, it becomes much more uh, important to prove that proof of concept uh, for that inevitable turnout of the product. That's the prove it moment where these things get integrated into the fleet, start to enjoy these tax incentives. Number 10 on the list here, and I'll close it out, and then I'll mention my two bonus strategies that I think they will. Um, my answers on the previous 10 were that I think all of these are going to come to fruition. There's been some progress marked on some, very little on others. Uh, but I think monitoring the company, I think if you can keep your focus off of the stock, number one, uh, keep your focus on the company itself, I think you are going to be well positioned to understand that these are things that I think the company is going to absolutely realize going forward. And I think the 10th thing is to pursue different income streams. I think those different skews of incomes just came as of the last couple of months with the Carno generator, being able to uh, provide or um, create cheaper energy uh, based on what's being able to be created and, and pushed to, uh, to remote sites. Uh, I think that's exciting. I think the onboard technology is something that I think has always been overlooked with Hylion. Um, and I think that it is going to, at some point, be kind of a dominator in the conversation. I think the equipment under the hood is second to none. But I think the monitoring systems over the Hylion solution are actually really the, the key here in tying everything together for the potential for preventative maintenance. Uh, for the opportunity for Hylion, not just to sell companies a product, rather to collaborate with them and become a lifelong partner going forward. So when we look at these anemic orders of 10 or so, just being a, as a building block to selling said product and making said profit on that said sale, perhaps maybe the value is below the surface and understanding that that relationship of those initial 10 is far more valuable to establish that customer as a lifelong customer and really let that customer understand that Hylion will be there for the long term, okay? And I think that's really the key in understanding that right now in this compression phase, a lot of everybody misses that aspect of the company and what they're trying to do in building a foundation for this company and evolve to something to where that organic growth can start that sp uh, spiraling and snowball effect going forward, all right? The two bonus things that I'll leave you with, and then we'll sign off for today uh, and the Sunday, Sunday video. This will be the last highly on video that I do for a couple of weeks. Um, I've, I'm actually on a professional obligation over the next couple of weeks, and I will be out of pocket. Um, so please understand um, if you, you know, want to go back and review some of the old content, you can. All that stuff's still valid. Uh, but this will be the last uh, for the viewing audience that uh, is devote and stays with me to the end because this is when I drop the nuggets. I do that for a reason. Um, I'm not interested with uh, pea brains who have an attention span of five minutes or less uh, because this is a life-changing opportunity. Um, look at it how you will. Um, there will be people who study and perhaps even scrutinize this body of work that I've put in on Hylion over the last couple of years. Uh, it will be studied. It will be scrutinized. Uh, will absolutely be um, uh, interpreted in a lot of different ways. My intent here is very, very simple. Simple. Leverage the power of social media to provide an education and an awareness on a company that I feel like has an idea of none of which I've ever seen before. The idea is fantastic. But here are the two bonus items that I want to push your guys this way. They need to improve sentiment. And that's part of the problem that I have about going silent on the line when the stock has done nothing but slip into oblivion. <clears throat> that does not suggest that they need to come out and hype the stock. It doesn't. What I think they continue to do is con continue to provide some level of assurance to shareholders that they're still there. Talk about the company. I don't care. You don't need to talk about the stock price. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with saying nothing, which is a terrible, terrible approach. Is that their approach? I, I don't know. It's part of the frustration. Okay. If they can come out, tell me a little bit more about Thomas Healy. Tell me a little bit more about where he comes from. Tell me a little bit more about it. There's all kinds of creative, cool stuff you can do. We know everything there is to know about Elon Musk. Okay. 
And that stuff is invaluable when shareholders really want to embrace the company and get to know them as a true investor, true investor. There'll be investors out there that invest for the money, yada, yada, yada. Me, I want to know the company. And when they basically turn a blind eye to me as a shareholder, pisses me off. Uh, and I know I'm not alone in this, okay? I know I'm not alone in this. Just to put out some level of PR, some level of press release, some level of some sort of update or progress, or none at all, none at all. Say, hey, we're still enduring the lingering effects of the supply chain issue. We've made marked progress on this, this, and this. We're happy to announce this, whatever. But they have to generate a lot more churn than zero, zero. And that will in turn improve sentiment. Improve sentiment, I believe that they will, but this is the biggest delta that I have because it seems like at this point, Hylion is unwilling to help themselves. And this is the impression that I get. A lot of people will disagree with me on this, but doing nothing does not suggest to me that they're doing everything that they can possibly do. I'm sorry. You wanna meet me in the middle somewhere there? Fine, but accepting nothing I think, again, I called everybody who accepted nothing mushrooms, uh, and I do believe that. Um, have a soul. Have a heart, okay? Defend your position, all right? Demand more of the company that we're looking to be so intimate with and support going forward on this road to path to profitability, the path toward uh, mass scale up and actually seeing this integration in the fleet that we are so in agreement will happen inevitably into the future. And the last thing I'll mention to monitor any, is any progress globally that they make, expand globally. If they realize all of these catalysts, how can we not look to say either, yes, it will improve the stock price or no, it won't. If all of the aforementioned list starts to become realized, we are in for a ride of our lives, guys. We are in for the ride of our lives. And it will be during that time when... I may segue the message because doing this highly on uh, opportunity when the stock is going down is uh, a lot less scrutinizing than if the stock goes up. See, I've been putting out a ton of content. Has it made a hell of a bit of difference at all with the stock? Of course not. Um, nor do I even believe that that's even a contributing factor. I, I totally believe that. Um, my motive is very, very sincere. Uh, my motive is very, very straightforward. Uh, and that is to provide awareness on a company that a lot of people didn't even know existed five years ago. Company's been around for seven, going on eight years. It's been in public markets for two, all right? The, the splash that this company is going to make when they start to check off, if not all of these boxes that I just talked about that are must-dos to succeed for Hylion, how can you not suggest that they are going to see a lot more success into the future? I'm a diplomatic applicator. This is just what I see. These are my opinions. Do not, do not make your investment decisions based on what you hear here. That's not the intent here is to drive your investment decisions. Now, that's not the intent. The intent is to share a story that I feel like is extremely exciting. And I feel like is progressing toward a very, very exciting decision point for the company when some of these things start to organically create churn and we enter into that expansion phase that I talked about rather than the, the severe compression phase that we find ourselves in now. Guys, I appreciate you continuing to support the message. I truly do. Um, we are off next Sunday and probably the Sunday after that. So two weeks of break, I will be out of pocket. This will be the last highly on video that I released for at least a half a month. Um, I'll look to re-engage in the pro uh, process and maybe look for better times. Perhaps maybe we'll identify in the compression uh, uh, phase is maybe moving away from us once the, we get off of these all-time lows here in the company, but I do appreciate you uh, tuning in with me for the totality of the video. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. If you do enjoy the video, hell, I would invite you guys to subscribe. I'm a very straightforward applicator. Um, I do, I'm not a professional on social media, uh, nor do I profess to be. I think a lot of people that profess to be professionals are not even close to being professionals. Uh, so who's to say it's all fair and love and war, but I think you appreciate my straightforward, uh, down-to-earth talk when we're talking about a company that I think has extreme potential going forward. We'll continue to monitor the company's progress. Hope you enjoyed this video in the 12 things the Hylion must do to succeed. We'll continue to monitor those things going forward. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.